Is Tom with us tonight? This is Frank Watson, uh, and uh, today with John Lowe on Kapoof. And uh, we started out as Poof, which is what happens when we run uh, off the edge uh, at the end of the free Zoom. Uh, but John usually kicks us off with such a bang that I <laughs> added the K to, to start it. So we are now Kapoof. And uh, John, how you doing? Very good, thank you. And, uh, and you're doing well, I hope? Doing well. Uh, uh, Tom is not going to join us today. I think he's got other stuff. So I uh, uh, that was the message I got. And well, so it's us. <clears throat> we could, um, he sent a very good article, uh, kind of a lengthy one for me to read. Uh, about uh, all the different classes, the uh, uh, mat the matter of um, race and uh, class distinctions and uh, the, all the history of the of modern world and um, of uh, economy and uh, all those things and. Um, I think it'd be well for us to pick up with him when he is here. But from what he provided in that article, uh, it's quite lengthy, and I was able to read it. And he had that beautiful poem, too, that uh, sort of uh, struck a chord with me. I don't know if you had a chance to read it or not, uh, Frank. From Lance and Hughes? Yes, yes. Uh, so... Uh, I think it's um, you and I can talk too. If um, uh, I, I would like to, for him to be with us to to expand further, you know, with what he contributed there and some of the issues. But you and I certainly can talk too. And uh, are there any things you want to talk about, this guy? I know you were talking about um, um, what is it? Um, uh, the economy of um, um, American economy. Can't even think of the word. Of 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 what now? The uh, American economy. The, um, the uh, you know I have problems with my thinking sometimes. Um, I understand that. <laughs> Uh, what's what's the word? <laughs> um, you have a problem. <laughs> we both do. Um, well, we're, we were discussing discuss, uh, a, a big question that we're facing is democracy, and uh, the uh, the economy that goes with a lot with democracy. What's that economy? Capitalism. Yeah. Capitalism. Couldn't think yeah. of that word. To save me, and I know you were talking a great deal about capitalism, and uh, they really go together. And uh, uh, secularism and uh, uh, religion, and how they all fit together. I might say that while discussing on this matter, I, I think that uh, any system is, in a sense, a religion that if I would define as Paul Tillich had said that um, you're, everyone has an ultimate concern. Everyone has an ultimate concern. What you give your life completely to as at any point in your life. And uh, you could just uh, quote that at, or think of that as a religion. And so we, we have religion of power, uh, one who gives himself completely to power. And we have that on our agenda today, certainly politically. And there's the radical right-wing church, which has its religion. The other extreme, on the other hand, is uh, Marxism, various kinds. And... Um, a lot of people think, well, they're atheistic. How can they be seen as a religion? Well, what does it give itself? What is its 
major commitment. And uh, today, uh, as far as our um, Antifa, the movement, or wokeism, if you follow it completely, as far as its communistic um, uh, uh, movement is, or organization, it's really not an organization, it's a movement, you might say. It's given to ch completely change the personality, the human being, uh, radical revolutionary change. Uh, as a religion, well, you, it turned out with um, Marxism, what, what did it give itself to? Well, economic um, quality, economic quality, to go against the exploit exploitation, which was their big sin. And uh, exploitation of one class over another, a big sin. And so they wanted to have a street, uh, shoot for a classless society. And um, and then this moved even further, more than just uh, economic, but also uh, cultural. And this is where Marx, um, Mao, I should say, Mao following Marx, not only economic, but a complete change of your culture. And he, he drove to what was called the Cultural Revolution. And this has been picked up after World War II, the, the, the failure of the Cold War, by others in what they call the Frankfurt School of Communism, headed up mostly by a man named Marcuse. And then he he was an ex-Nazi, and then um, he's been pushing strongly <clears throat> for this complete change of the the, the cultural change transformation <clears throat> like a religion of course atheistic though atheistic and uh, this takes holds particularly in America with the race problem and uh, there was a, a bit of this back in the 60s after Martin Luther King had peacefully brought about a great change bringing about the civil uh, changes, uh, um, um, civil rights, to overcome a lot of the Jim Crow problems. But there was a, a, a bit of militancy back then, the Black Panther, there was uh, Adele Davis, and then uh, Angela Davis, I mean, and also um, Malcolm X. But this lost its fervor and one reason is the the, uh, the changes in in um, it, 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 the uh, uh, civil rights w was successful and so forth. And then in Vietnam, uh, sort of changed a lot of this uh, that prop that uh, 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 movement it absorbed a lot of it. But anyway, later. Uh, th there have been these uh, uprisings, um, the consciousness of, think of the, the number of black people in prisons and uh, difficulties of e economically uh, with the black people and so forth, uh, where a lot of them have thought, have thought concluded, well, uh, America is a, is a uh, racist country. And uh, which is, is false because we've made real progress. But think for 100 years, Jim Crow had still continued after slavery was uh, abolished. Uh, we forget how just within 50 years or so, how bad it was before that, especially in the South, in some ways uh, in the North as well. Well, anyway, with the uh, Floyd George incident in Minneapolis, uh, this sparked a revival of that kind of militancy. And uh, there was a movement among the, the, uh, in the schools and universities of atheistic type of humanists who have gravitated more to a Marxist point of view because they're atheists. And um, we went through that kind of atheism. And also... Um, 
a, a, do your thing, be free to do what you want to do, and all that kind of extremism with that too. There's uh, there's a point to that, but there can be an extremism of, of it. At, anyway, with the uh, uh, George Floyd problem, there sparked a revolution, uh, a what they call wokeism or Antifa. Antifa means the extreme uh, rebellion against uh, fascism. It's taken from that. Also, wokeism. Well, the first idea of being a woke is to be, I mean, saying woke is to be awake to the injustices in, in races and classes, to be awake of the inhumanity that's, that's there. And so we made a lot of progress, but still there's a lot of inhumanity there. And so that's to be woke. Well, if you take it to the extreme, though, if you push it far enough, it goes to revolution. And that's what, what wokeism sort of has been identified with today. Ext revolution, because it's taken too long. What will it take to really raise the, the uh, marginalized people with all their problems has to be a real change in uh, in, uh, in the culture in the, among the people. And it may involve truly a revolution, could be violent. Well, we have oh, oh, on the right wing revolutionary tendencies today. And that kind of religion or sub religion, and so you have the same thing religion, anti religion, but it, which is a religion on the left side. That's why we have this conflict today. And of course, democracy fits in there too. Uh, and the, you know, the abuses of democracy with what you were saying, the uh, uh, that form of economy, uh, I can't even think of it again. Uh, capitalism. 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 Uh, you know, we have to deal with that along with democracy because if you have free will, free property, market, and then you have achievers and non-achievers, this you have the same problem. And so, how do we handle these problems? And so, on the left, left, I mean, so on the right side, you have a kind of a dominance of a power dominance like fascism, um, almost a tendency toward racism. And in dominance of of religion over separation of church and state, and they they're trying to to uh, support one another in their own way. Then on the on the extreme left, you have the uh, atheistic class idea of equality, inclusion, and diversity which sound very good, and there's a lot of truth in that. So what well, I could almost say is there truth on both sides, moralism in comparison to e equality. Are there goods on both sides? Are there evils on both sides? And I think that's something we could talk about. You know, um, capitalism, yes, I got the word out that time. <laughs> capitalism, democracy, and this is really thrust upon us. We can't avoid it. I, you know, the elections are coming up. And uh, it's not something we can just sit back and, well, we'll ponder um, about. I, I just run into in our community and people, two things I can't understand that uh, goes along with American culture is two things you don't talk about. You don't talk about politics and you don't talk about religion. You don't talk about politics, don't you? and somehow that becomes an ultimate end in itself. Complacency, closed-mindedness about borders, boundaries, and there should be even civil, loving discussion, open-mindedness. Why can't we have that? But um, I think there's more possibility with the young people, because a lot of the Asian people are set in their ways, and they're more interested in other things, sort of living out their years with, you know, as much as they can, as considering our health and 
I'm in there too. What's important to, you know, the old song um, from the uh, Chicago was, um, does anybody know what time it is? Does anybody know what time it is? Well, we only have so much time. And so uh, what do we do with that time? Well, we can play and uh, do this, uh, you know, play bingo and uh, do our crossword puzzles. And um, that's fine. However, what more? Well, I've spit out enough. <laughs> well, we are in a predicament. <laughs> and um, if we only look at our history uh, and, and the history of how we got to be in the predicament, our our situation is hopeless. Uh, if if we if we don't destroy ourselves with a nuclear war, we will destroy ourselves with global warming. I won't call it. Uh, I won't call. I won't call out human caused climate change because it doesn't make any difference what's causing the change in the climate. The climate is changing. The question is not just what caused it. The question is what can we do about it? And the political and situation and the economic situation <clears throat> are related in that both of them have either or advocates for for either keeping things as they are or changing and either or is symptomatic of addictive thought dysfunctional thought you got to have all one or all the other my way or the highway Theism. <laughs> and that that way uh, that locks uh, every both sides into a power struggle. Now I in my way of looking at it, the power struggle is being financed sometimes with our money by people who are invested in the power that they already have and don't want to lose on either side. And they are willing to sacrifice the possibility of winning their cause, winning an election to maintain the power that they have within their system, within the Democrats. The reason that Mr. Trump has a chance of winning in this election can be attributed to the fact that the Democrats have failed to produce a com really truly competitive leader who is both young enough and uh, uh, popular enough and central enough uh, to to get votes from the remaining Republicans who would go for uh, any candidate who would be reasonable for them. The reason that uh, that Mr. Trump is is so strong can be traced directly to the. Uh, 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 Clintons and Pelosi and the power structure of the Democrats. The uh, they the, the Republicans have managed to uh, <clears throat> stay in power or to produce as, as much of a, a, a a political forces they have 
because the the Democrats <clears throat> aren't coming up with uh, uh, anything really uh, solid and useful. The 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 Republicans don't ha on their part are so attached to capitalism as it is, which is not really truly capitalism. What what we have is the result of a of a capitalism that has not had its failures addressed. Um, market failures exist. And uh, one of the most critical was pointed out by Adam Smith, who said that there are times when due to circumstances, <laughs> laboring people are, are not paid the full worth of their work. Well, what happens in that instance? You get excessive wealth that is not really produced by a pure capitalism. It's produced by a failed capitalism that's failed because of a failure of its theory or the application of its theory, which means if you can apply the theory and not get the results you're looking for, you have a failure in your theory. OK, uh, if working people always got the, the full benefit of their labor, then uh, what would happen would be similar to what was uh, uh, outlined by uh, a couple of Harvard guys in a book called Creative Destruction. This this was back when uh, 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 the company started right sizing and contracting out things that uh, were not their core business. And what uh, what the theory was was uh, if you to to make use of the technology. The technology in the, in a particular case was computer uh, uh, technology. And what they did was they introduced the computers and they got rid of something like half their employees. Uh, they, and they, they were selective in that process. And they told the remaining employees, use your computers and get the work done if you want to keep your job. Then, Along with that, they they identified things like um, for Eli Lilly, for instance, uh, they contracted out their security, they contracted out their building maintenance, and in some case, ownership of property uh, to to people who would who would take care of their their physical security, their plant engineers. Uh, their building maintenance, all of that was not central to their business. So this whole process took place and the the uh, the thing is the corporate leadership and the stockholders benefited greatly. But the remaining employees, not so much, and the contractors did not uh, benefit even that much. You had a reduction for the working person whose management had changed through no fault of their own. They went to work for Eli Lilly and ended up working for uh, various security contractors. Their benefits were cut, their wages were cut, uh, they became outsiders in a company that they had helped grow. So had employees been given some of the benefits of the increases in e efficient management, you would have benefited the entire economy more. Do you have any examples where it was successful in companies to share with the employees 
There, there have been a, a few. I do have one, if you, and you can think of it. Yeah. Susan Roebuck, way back when they were very successful, under the CEO or leader, uh, General Wood. You don't maybe remember this. This goes back. There was a time that he included all employees, even part-time workers, vacation. If you're a part-time worker, you could earn some vacation. And if uh, given enough uh, time within the company and uh, certain uh, levels of points, you could actually participate in ownership or stock. Yeah. And more and more of them, if you were worked a long time with Sears and Robot back in those years, why you could earn a lot of stock. You could own a lot of stock as an employee. And uh, there was this notion that they didn't fire anybody. Hardly, unless you were dishonest or something like that. Right. If a salesman didn't do well in one department, they'd switch him to another department. I remember a case where they, they put him in cold beer and that didn't work. And they put him this way and that way and paint and all. Now, but they they put him in television at that time. It was c coming to be a big... He went wild selling television. <laughs> he yeah. worked hard. He wanted... He, he didn't want... But he didn't do well. But in television, he took off. Well, see, that's how that's how Eli Lilly was uh, at first. when he started. Well, you see, but soon Roebuck, they got away from that later. I think after General Wood died, then and then went it went a different direction. And, and you know what, John? There's there's a a you know fairy tales have wonderful wonderful qualities, and one is they tell truths that are uh, uh, generational and and that that continue to be true through time, and that humans. Uh, people uh, fail uh, when they fail to educate themselves in the basic truths of the fairy tales they fail to recognize uh, what they're doing uh, is, is a bad idea and it's been known mm -hmm. uh, is that it's a bad idea for a long long time and the story that comes to my mind is the story of the, the, the goose that laid the golden eggs. Mm -hmm. And all you had to do is wait for the goose to lay the golden egg, and you got a golden egg. And the people that owned the goose got in a hurry, and they killed the goose to, to get the gold out of the goose. And, <laughs> and that... Good John, point. Is, mm -hmm. is, it goes deep into the human psyche, that tendency to greed. It's, it's um, the love of money uh, as, a, as the root of evil. It's the love of power. And that's a lot of it, yes. You see, and, that's the ultimate concern again, you see. What's the ultimate concern? Power. And, that's the ultimate concern? Money. And... <laughs> and the, the the situation that I see is that the divisions, the things that are driving the country to the extremes, are there are people with power who want to remain in power, and the only way that they can remain in power is to have everybody on their side so mm -hmm. focused on fighting the enemy that they don't clean their own house. The Republicans are doing that, and the Democrats are doing that, and there's big money going into each party to keep them doing that, and sometimes the money into each party comes from the same places. Hmm. Big companies will give money to both parties so that either party that wins is beholden to them, and they are paying them just like uh, 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 some place in Las Vegas 
would pay two prize fighters to go in the ring and 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 fight yeah, yeah. fight each other they are paying them because when everybody's put down their money to see the fight the house gets the profits mm -hmm. and that's what's going on very simply in our country there are ways that we could address it but won't mm -hmm. uh, that i that i don't see us uh, I don't think the people in this country are smart enough uh, to in, in sufficient numbers to understand what's going on. And and the only thing that I can see that is is uh, likely that it has any chance of saving us is either uh, uh, is some sort of divine uh, divine action, divine intervention. And, and the reason, there, the things that I see that could save us, uh, if, if, and this is a huge if, if we were to really bring our religions into agreement that the, that the important thing that Christianity, Judaism, mm -hmm. and, uh, Islam, Buddhism, if those religions were to agree that the important thing for them to do was would be to follow the main commandment of each religion, compassionate love for our neighbors if we well, were to do that well it's already there too even in the secular world it's already there in a lot of ways but it's, and, it's uh, not it's not being it's not being acted on this was uh put in place by hans kuhn which is a very liberal catholic theologian i don't know if you've around to him much and uh he, he pointed out that in all the major religions, they hold the major religions, they hold to the, the good golden rule or the silver rule, which is the, the negative side of the golden rule. Don't do any others that you would not want them to do. You know, it's the silver rule. The golden rule is because Christ really gave us the golden rule then. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And, uh, you see, that's in a way that's love. You see, you're getting out of yourself for the other party. And of course, what Christ, and this is my what I stress so strongly, the hierarchy of values, the hierarchy of values. What's at the top? We I said, you know, raise the question, what's your ultimate concern? Well, you can say this, that, and the other, but when it gets to the end at the very top, it's to love God with your whole being and love your neighbor as yourself. The God of love. It's all love. Yeah. I've I said before, Bert Backrack said it. What the world needs is love, which has too little love. And I think he meant more than just sensual love or, you know, romantic love. I think he meant more than that. And even the Beatle, <laughs> when he get rid of maybe old time sense of uh, false religion, you know, if we didn't have religion, well, maybe we could get rid of that other kind of religion that's, you know, that's dominating and uh, negative and fearful. Then he, that would apply. But you're right. We're together on that. It's love. Ag agape love. And it's there. The Greeks had the word for it. Where did ag agape come from? The word is Greek. Agape is love. They had the word for it. <laughs> and that, that truth, love. Truth, love, and beauty. Truth, Plato, truth, love, and beauty. He, even, he said goodness. This is the way I think Plato made it. Goodness. Wait a minute. Goodness, truth, and beauty. Goodness, truth, and beauty. They go together. So we we know what the we know what the we know what the word is we know what the principle is we yeah. know what the truth is 
that will save the world if it is adhered to. The question is, why is it not adhered to? Well, let, let me give you some hope. Look what's going on. If you keep up with YouTube again, there's a revival uh, on the on the making. Not just you know grassroots put away. You know, just read what the Bible says. Doo -doo 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 -doo. No, it's on the intellectual levels, philosophical levels of the top of, top people. A revival of return to God intellectually, emotionally, mostly emotionally. Uh, on a level, uh, I would say, is at the heart level. They're beginning to see this, that just materialistic, naturalistic uh, approach to life is all you need. It's just science and uh, uh, just work out, work out your life without any appeal to, to, to God. It doesn't work. Communism won't work either because it's atheistic. Uh, because then the individual is nothing, human being is nothing. It's, it's whatever you want to make it again, power again. It's power in a different direction. So, and the one redeeming thing about our Constitution is, is you know, we're created in that in the image. We're created with the sense of equality. By whom? By the Creator. It's one thing that helps us in our Constitution. So it's not a purely not a purely secular document. We do have in God we trust in the dollar bills and in our coins and so forth. It's there. Eisenhower put it into the Pledge of Allegiance. So it's there. But if you take that out, then what you all you have is just a secular point of view. And then who's going to take over then? Then the big point is this values. It's values that is missing with all the atheistic approaches, naturalistic approaches. Where the values come in. It's not just facts, but values. And you see now, a lot of the top secularists, Bill Gates, Pinkert of Harvard, atheists, psychologists, so forth and so forth, any number of them, where do they go to? Well, we're, we'll create our own values. Just give it some thought. I know one guy will say, well, let's start, let's just do it rationally. Being is better than not being, right? Just say, rationally speaking, being is better than not being. Health is better than sickness, right? Scratching each other's back and forth, you know, quid quad quo is better than just selfishness because you you do better in the long run. You you you'll get better results if you treat other people right, you know. 